for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show by People's Dispatch, where we bring you the struggles of people across the world against patriarchy, imperialism, capitalism, as well as their fight to build a better society. We begin with Argentina, where after decades of struggle, the people are celebrating a historic victory. On the morning of December 11th, the lower house of the country's parliament endorsed the bill that decriminalizes abortion. The Chamber of Deputies of the National Congress debated for over 20 hours before approving the voluntary termination of pregnancy bill. The bill will now be sent to the Senate for discussion and eventual approval. The historic news was celebrated across the country. Hundreds and thousands of people, especially women, feminists and members of the LGBTQ community, who have been on the streets for the past many years, welcomed the decision with tears of joy. They also urged the senators to vote in favour of this integral right. Argentine women have been demanding abortion rights for decades. In 2015, feminists and women activists founded the National Campaign for the Right to Legal, Safe and Free Abortion. Since then, this campaign has been at the forefront of the women's struggle for the right to autonomy over their bodies and their lives. Even as the bill was being debated in the National Congress, a sea of women and activists in green kept a vigil outside the Congress throughout the night. The colour green represents the feminist struggle for legal abortion. The progressive government of Frente de Todos, led by President Alberto Fernandez, has also contributed to promoting the bill. The legislation allows a pregnant person to access any abortion in any private or public health institute until the 14th week of gestation. After 14 weeks, a pregnant person can only exercise their abortion rights if their life is in danger or if the pregnancy is a result of rape. The bill has also established that health professionals must respond to these requests and execute the procedure within a maximum period of 10 days after the request. Abortion has been illegal in Argentina for decades, but in 1921 an exception was passed which allowed it to be performed until the 24th week of gestation in case of rape and when the life of a pregnant person is at risk. However, authorities estimate that every year over 500,000 abortions are performed in unsafe and clandestine conditions and nearly 40,000 women are hospitalized after performing unsafe abortions. According to official data, since the return of democracy in Argentina in 1983, more than 3,000 women have died because of poorly performed abortions. The passage of this bill is even more significant for working class women. Women from upper classes often have the resources to access abortions by exploiting exceptions in the law. But this option is not available for those from the working class. After this momentous victory, the National Campaign for Legal, Safe and Free Abortion wrote in a tweet, our struggle built networks of sorority, we are the green tide, we are millions and we are going to remain in the streets and everywhere else until abortion is legalized. In our next story, we look at the various demonstrations that were held across the world on International Human Rights Day. Every year, Human Rights Day is observed on December 10th, which is the day the United Nations adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. From Latin America to East Asia, people took to the streets demanding basic human rights, the release of political prisoners and freedom of expression. Anti-imperialist movements in various parts of the world used this day to extend their solidarity to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, who is a political prisoner. The Global Coalition, as part of the International Week of Anti-Imperialist Struggle, issued a call for action demanding an end to the inhuman conditions that Assange has been subjected to. On December 8th, Assange completed a decade of confinement in one form or the other. As of December 11th, he will complete 20 months of imprisonment in Belmarsh Prison in the United Kingdom. The Week of Anti-Imperialist Struggle is urging activists to sign an open letter to the British government demanding that Assange be released immediately. 
The letters raise grave concerns for his health and safety, considering the COVID-19 outbreak in the UK and also the prison. The letter can be signed on antiimperialistweek.org. Meanwhile, in Chile, hundreds took to the streets to demand the release of all political prisoners in the country. There was a special emphasis on the demand to release the protesters arrested during the demonstrations that began on October 19th for a new and inclusive constitution. Protesters also demanded the release of indigenous Mapuche political prisoners. In Paraguay, demonstrations took place as well. Social movements and political organizations mobilized to demand government policies that grant basic human rights to the people. These include decent housing, health and food. In Colombia, social movements mobilized against the escalation in violence in indigenous and rural territories. The assassination of social activists in Colombia is continuing at a horrifying rate. Since right-wing President Ivan Duque took office in 2018, more than 685 social activists and more than 160 former FARC combatants have been assassinated. Coming to Asia, in India, activists of the All India Democratic Women's Association held demonstrations in various parts of the country. They were demanding affordable food for all, end to gender-based violence, employment and pensions for widows and disabled persons. Finally, in the Philippines, despite torrential rain, various human rights groups staged a rally against the administration of Rodrigo Duterte. Their demands included protection of human rights defenders, junking of the anti-terror law and the release of political prisoners. However, the same day, the government conducted raids at the homes of six trade unionists and a journalist and arrested them. These arrests have been strongly condemned by human rights groups who are continuing to organize demonstrations demanding their release. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back next week with more stories of struggle from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,